Hi, super kids. I just flew in for story time. Come and join me. Queen Hippolyta used to read to me every evening before I went to bed. Reading is one of my favorite pastimes. Today's book is Horton Hears a Who. Horton Hears a Who by Dr. Seuss. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton, the elephant, heard a small noise. What do you think he heard? So Horton stopped splashing. He looked toward the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. Then he heard it again, just a very faint yelp as if some tiny person were calling for help. I'll help you, said Horton, but who are you? Where? He looked and he looked. He could see nothing there but a small speck of dust blowing past through the air. I say, murmured Horton, I've never heard tell of a small speck of dust that is able to yell. So you know what I think? Why, I think there must be someone on top of that small speck of dust, some sort of creature of very small size, too small to be seen by an elephant's eyes. Do you think there's something there? Some poor little person who's shaking with fear that he'll blow in the pool. He has no way to steer. I'll just have to save him because after all, a person's a person, no matter how small. So gently and using the greatest of care, the elephant stretched his great trunk through the air and he lifted the dust back and carried it over and placed it down soft on a very soft clover. That was very considerate of him. Humph, humped a voice. Oops, let's take a page. Humph, humped a voice, twas a sour kangaroo, and the young kangaroo in her pouch said, Humph, too. Why, that speck is as small as the head of a pin. A person on that? Why, there never has been. She is not very nice. Believe me, said Horton, I tell you sincerely, my ears are quite keen, and I heard him quite clearly. I know there's a person down there, and what's more, quite likely there's two, even three, even four, quite likely. A family for all that we know, a family with children just starting to grow. So please, Horton said, as a favor to me, try not to disturb them, just please let them be. I think you're a fool, laughed the sour kangaroo. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. You're the biggest blame fool in the jungle of Newell and the kangaroos plunged in the cool of the pool. What terrible splashing, the elephant frowned. I can't let my small person get drowned. I've got to protect them. I'm bigger than they. So he plucked up the clover and hustled away. Through the high jungle tops, the news quickly spread. He talks to Dustbeck, he's out of his head. Just look at him walk with that speck on that flower and Horton walked worrying almost an hour. Should I put this back down? Horton thought with alarm. If I do, these small persons may come to great harm. I can't put it down and I won't. After all, a person's a person, no matter how small. Horton's a very good guy. Then Horton stopped walking. The speck voice was talking. The voice was so faint, he could just barely hear it. Speak up, please, said Horton. He put his ear near. There he is putting his ear near. My friend, came the voice. You're a very fine friend. You've helped us all folks on this dust speck no end. You've saved all our houses, our ceilings and floors. 
You saved all our churches and grocery stores. Horton is a hero. You mean, Horton gasped, you have buildings there too? Oh yes, piped the voice. We most certainly do. I know, called the voice, I'm too small to be seen, but I'm mayor of a town that is friendly and clean. Our buildings to you would seem terribly small, but to us, who aren't big, they are wonderfully tall. My town is called Whoville, for I am a who. And we who's are all thankful and grateful to you. And Horton called back to the mayor of the town, you're safe now, don't worry, I won't let you down. But just as he spoke to the mayor of the speck, three big jungle monkeys climbed up Horton's neck. The Wickersham brothers came shouting, what rot, this elephant's talking to who's who are not? There aren't any who's and they don't have a mayor and we're going to stop all this nonsense. So there. Uh-oh, Horton's gonna save the who's. They snatched Horton's clover, they carried it off to a black bottom eagle named Vlad Vladikov, a mighty strong eagle of very swift wing, and they said, will you kindly get rid of this thing? And before the poor elephant even could speak, the eagle flew off with a flower in his beak. There he goes, he's gonna fly away. All that late afternoon and far into the night, that black-bottomed bird flapped his wings in fast flight, while Horton chased after with groans over stones that tattered his toenails and battered his bones, and begged, please don't harm all my little folks who have as much right to live as us bigger folks do. But far, far beyond him, that eagle kept flapping, and over his shoulder called back, Quit your yapping. I'll fly the night through. I'm a bird. I don't mind it. And I'll hide this tomorrow where you'll never find it. And at 6.56, the next morning he did. It sure was a terrible place that he hid it. He let that small clover drop somewhere inside of a great patch of clovers a hundred miles wide. Find that, sneered the bird but I think you will fail. And he left with a flip of his black bottom tail. Poor Horton. Look at all those clovers. Do you think he's gonna find it? I'll find it, said Horton. I'll find it or bust. I shall find my friends on my small speck of dust. And clover by clover, by clover with care, he picked up and searched them and called, are you there? But clover by clover, he found that the one he sought for was just not around. And by noon, poor old Horton, more dead than alive, had picked, searched, and piled up 9,005. That's a lot of clovers. Look at all the piles he went through looking for his friends. Then on through the afternoon, hour after hour, till he found them at last on the three million flower. My friends, cried the elephant, tell me, do tell, are you safe? Are you sound? Are you whole? Are you well? From down on the speck came the voice of the mayor. We've really had trouble, much more than our share. When that black bottom birdie let go and we dropped, we landed so hard that our clocks have all stopped. Our teapots are broken, our rocking chair smashed, and our bicycle tires all blew up when we crashed. So Horton, please, pleaded the voice of the mayor, will you stick by us who's while we're making repairs? Of course, Horton answer, answered, of course I will stick. I'll stick by you small folks through thin and through thick. Look at what a disaster happened when that black bottom bird dropped them. Their whole village is almost destroyed. Hump, humped a voice for almost two days. You run wild and insisted on chatting with persons who never existed. Such carrying ons in our peaceable jungle. We've had quite enough of your bellowing bungle. And I'm here to state, snapped the big kangaroo, that your silly, nonsensical game is all through. 
and the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. With the help of the Wickersham brothers and dozens of Wickersham uncles and Wickersham cousins and Wickersham in-laws whose help I've engaged, you're going to be roped. You're going to be caged. And as for your speck of dust, ha, that we shall boil in a hot steaming kettle of bezel nut oil. Boil it, guessed Horton. Oh, that you can't do. It's all full of persons. They'll prove it to you. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, Horton called. Mr. Mayor, you've got to prove now that you really are there. So call a big meeting. Get everyone out. Make every who holler, make every who shout. Make every who scream. If you don't, every who is going to end up in bezel nut stew. Do you think they're going to be loud enough? And down on the dust back, the scared little mayor quick called a big meeting in the Whoville Town Square. And as people cried loudly, they cried out in fear, we are here, we are here, we are here. The elephant smiled. That was clear as a bell. You kangaroo surely heard that very well. All I heard, snapped the big kangaroo was the breeze and the faint sound of the wind through the fat distant trees. I heard no small voices and you didn't either. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me neither. Grab him, they shouted, and cage the big dope, lasso his stomach with 10 miles of rope, tie the knots tight so he'll never shake loose, then dunk that speck in the bezel nut juice. Horton fought back with great vigor and vim, but the Wickersham gang was too many for him. They beat him, they mauled him, they started to haul him into his cage, but he managed to call to the mayor, don't give up, I believe in you all. A person's a person, no matter how small. And you, very small persons, will not have to die if you make yourselves heard, so come on now and try. The mayor grabbed a tom-tom, he started to smack it, and all over Whoville they whooped up a racket. They rattled tin kettles, they beat on brass pans, on garbage pail tops, in old cranberry cans. They blew on bazookas and blasted great toots, on clarinets, oompas, and boompas, and flutes. Great gust of loud racket rang high through the air, they rattled and shook the whole sky. And the mayor called up through the howling mad hullabaloo, Hey Horton, how's this? Is our sound coming through? And Horton called back, I can hear you just fine, but the kangaroo's ears, they aren't quite as strong as mine. They don't hear a thing. Are you sure all your boys are doing their best? Are they all making noise? Are you sure every who down in Whoville is working? Quick, look through your town. And is there anyone shirking? Through the town rushed the mayor from the east to the west, but everyone seemed to be doing their best. Everyone seemed to be yapping or yipping. Everyone seemed to be beeping or bipping, but it wasn't enough. All this ruckus and roar. He had to find someone to help him make more. He raced through each building. He searched floor to floor. There he goes. He's racing around trying to find one more who. And just as he felt, he was getting nowhere and almost about to give up in despair. He suddenly burst through a door and that mayor discovered one shirker. Oh dear. Quite hidden away in the Fairfax apartments, apartment 12J. A very small, very small shirker named Jojo was standing, just standing and bouncing a yo-yo not making a sound, not a yip, not a chirp. And the mayor rushed inside and he grabbed the young twerp. There he is, he's not helping. And he climbed with the lad up the Eiffelberg Tower. There they go, all the way up. This, cried the mayor, is your town's darkest hour. The time for all who's who have blood that is red to come out to aid of their country, he said. We've got to make noises in greater amounts, so open your mouth, lad, for every voice counts. Thus he spoke as he climbed when they got to the top. 
The glad cleared his throat and he shouted out, Yop! And that yop, that one small extra yop, put it over. Finally, at last, from that speck on that clover, their voices were heard. They rang out clear and clean, and that elephant smiled. Do you see what I mean? They've proved they are persons, no matter how small, and their whole world was saved by the smallest of all. How true, yes, how true, said the big kangaroo. And from now on, you know what I'm planning to do. From now on, I'm going to protect them with you. And the young kangaroo in her pouch said, me too. From sun in the summer, from rain when it's fallish, I'm going to protect them no matter how smallish. The end. Thank you for joining me, and now I have to go. See you later. Hera, give me strength. Hey. Put down my car.